the on the 12th of August every year there's a march around the walls by the Apprentice Boys which is an orange Protestant organization which really that march says it has got a lot of fancy language but the march says to the Catholics you're not as good as us and we're keeping you down that's basically been saying that for hundreds of years and but people had had enough so there was no question there was going to be something happen in 1968 so um, people were getting prepared for it now it's a, a one thing happened in that uh, time which we should definitely record is on the night before that march always took place the 12th of August on the night before that the Young Socialists, which was big here in Derry at the time, maybe 200 members, maybe 150 members. The Labour Party was the biggest political organisation in Derry at the time. would have weekly meetings of 200 people, overwhelmingly working class people. Yeah. The, um, uh, but the, the night before the 12th of August, a number of young people went up to the gate, uh, which... Uh, um, leads to the fountain. And we're going to, a number of young people from the bog side, a number of Catholic youth, went up and we're going to attack the fountain. Because sectarianism was beginning to build in general. And the young socialists spent hours there that night talking them out of attacking the fountain. And we said, it's not right to do, they're Protestant workers, we're trying to unite with them, but also if you attack them, we'll be blamed for everything that follows and so on. And we succeeded. And they didn't attack the fun. Now, the next day, the Apprentice Boys March took place and they marched right down to the edge of the bog site, protected by the cops, and then the attack came on the march. And those of us who had spent the night before um, talking the young guys out of attacking the fountain, we were there and then inv we then became involved. And the uh, fighting in the bog side, defending the bog side against the cops, because the cops then poured into the bog side. And the fighting went on uh, for days, up and down William Street, Rossville Street. I mean, it was, uh, I never, I was transformed by that, you know. The whole area took part. I mean, I remember ladies in their 50s and 60s uh, making petrol bombs. Uh, and uh, I remember with a member of the Labour Party, we went out to a gas station on the road out to that one that goes out to St. Johnson Letter Kenny and to get some gas. And we went, <laughs> we went out and it wasn't open. And, uh, you know, you were, you were at the beginning of a movement and your consciousness was changing. And we, I always remember we went out and the gas station was closed. And we said, God damn it, it's closed. And then we stood in front of it for a minute, laughing at ourselves, you know, the whole area. Was, so we got a big rock, and put it through the window and turned on the switches and filled up all the gas and brought it back in and told the guys and everybody went out and got gas. And um, the ladies, they were down at the back, the old ladies, they were making the petrol bombs. The kids were carrying them up the front. They were taking them up the Rossville Flats, throwing them down at the cops. I mean, this was a serious uprising. And uh, it lasted, I think, five or six days. And then the cops got exhausted. And then the British realized big factors got involved then. When Britain, you know, there's tens of millions of British people of Irish background, and they were watching this. The whole of Southern Ireland was watching this. And Southern Ireland, the working class began to say, we got to do something about this. And the Southern Irish government began to be in danger of losing control. So they contacted the British government, who sent the British army in, because if they hadn't, there could have been an uprising in the south, and it could have came into the north, and the whole, could have been a civil war breakout, the whole thing could have went. So the British army came in and put a ring around the bog side, stopped the special, B specials being sent in, pulled back the RUC, and for a period then the area was at free dairy. There was no, the state apparatus was not there. Now, 
what controlled the area then was there was the election of the Bogside Defence Association. And I was elected onto that as a delegate from the Young Socialists. And that uh, lasted for, I don't remember how long it lasted for, but it was a serious body. Like every night it met and uh, people would come in with their different problems and then a huge political debate and battle opened up on it over the question of the barricades. The Catholic Church, which had mobilized its supporters in the area to run for elections to this body, the uh, people like John Hume, who worked very closely with them, the Nationalist Party, the all very strongly wanted the barricades taken down as quick as possible. Because as long as they were up there, then all kinds of people were speaking for the bog side. Like me, I could speak for the bog side. You know, if a reporter came in and asked me a question, I would just tell him what I thought. Eamon McCann, Bernda Devlin was there at that time, you know, and they didn't want that. They wanted official spokesman like the bishop or you know, the Nationalist Party MP from the past, or John Hume, or whatever. And they went it under control again. And uh, so there'd be big debates like that take place. And um, then at that time, the provos began to, began to develop, the Republican movement began to split. But the big problem for us at that time was, is we did not have forces that could have explained an alternative to the Protestant working class. I mean, we explained it, but we were very weak. But more importantly, we didn't have forces in the South that could see, that could take up a big movement in the South against the Southern state that could have said to the Protestant working class, look, there's an alternative. Like, we decided to try and spread it to the South. And in Lifford, where I come from, the county, Donegal County Council is in Lifford. And they have their meetings every once a month or something like that. Well, myself, some Republicans, young socialists from Straban, we took it over once. And uh, we had a, an agenda worked out. The agenda was everybody had to have a job, everybody had to have a higher minimum wage. And, you know, it was a, a very good agenda. And uh, then we all got arrested, taken to the Garda station in Lifford, and we had all journalists warned, and they were there, and we were handing our flyers out the window and so on. And so then they broke the door down, took us and arrested us. And this is what we wanted. We wanted to spread it to the south. And we were in the Garda station, and we heard the sergeant on the phone to the regional head of the cops in Letterkenny. And we could only hear one side of the conversation, but it was this, his side of the conversation was, let them go. What are you talking about? They took over the county council office. Let them go, we keep saying. And what was clear was this, the southern state at least understood that we must not let it spread to the south. Keep it confined up there. And then 